poetry. This amusing genre of literature represents feelings and emotions expressed in words and very mysterious and masterful combinations make you feel, sympathize, imagine, dream, but what is much more important, make you be refiner, noble, teach you to see the beauty of the world around you, just to be better. Poetry is the most precious treasure of every language, and the English one is not an exception. Speaking about this aspect of the British culture, we would like our viewers to penetrate into its magnificent world, feel its deepest emotion, and realize its stunning beauty. As any other poetry, the British one reflects its own history, traditions, and peculiar features of the region it is written in. We would like you to recite some pieces of poetry which belongs to the list of the best British poetry ever written. You have glimpse on its origin, try to understand its nature, and we'll start with Scotland. Scotland, the country of wild beauty, courageous and proud Highlanders. Scotland, the truly fascinating country, with much to interest the visitors. Famous worldwide for the magnificence of its scenery, this relatively small geographical area possesses a remarkable variety of landscapes and seascapes. Numerous mysterious castles, stately homes, churches and abbeys allow the visitor to touch history. This is a land of romance and it has had an eventful history. It was in the 11th century that the Romans began to settle in Scotland. The kings went to war, the noblemen went to war, the proud Highlanders fought in endless battle. Here the greatest human figures lived. Mary, Queen of Scots, a beautiful Mary Stuart, a real queen, who went to the scaffolds with highly raised head. Robert de Bruce, King of Scotland, who won independence of Scotland from England. It is a glorious land which gave birth to George Byron, Walter Scott, Robert Stevenson, Robert Burns and Arthur Conan Doyle. Their talent was a wonderful line which expressed the sentimental spirit of dear love to the land and freedom. Robert Burns, my heart's in the highlands. My heart's in the highlands. My heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer, a chasing the wild deer, and following the row. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. Farewell to the highlands, farewell to the north, the birthplace of Wella, the country of Worth. Wherever I wander, wherever I row, the hills of the highlands, forever I love. Farewell to the mountains, high covered with snow. Farewell to the stress and green valleys below. Farewell to the forests and wild hanging woods. Farewell to the torrents and loud pouring floods. My heart's in the highlands, my heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer, a chasing the wild deer and following the road. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. The stunning beauty of Scotland is charming and breathtaking. Its scenery, nature, even its sets and don'ts seem to be fabulous and unreal. George Byron, Twilight. It is the hour when from the bows the nightingale's high note is heard. It is the hour when lovers' vows seem sweet in every whispered word, and gentle winds and waters near make music to the lonely ear. Each flower the dews have lightly wet, and in the sky the stars are met, and on the wave is deeper blue and on the leaf a browner hue and in the heaven that clear obscure so softly dark and darkly pure that follows the decline of day as twilight melts beneath the moon away Wales, smaller than Ireland and Scotland, many people see Wales as a just another part of England with its provincial but mainly English culture. 
When you cross over into Wales, the first thing you notice is the landscape, freewheeling and fresh. Visually distinctive it possesses a music all of its own. The deep forests of breaking beacons release plums of steam in a summer dawn. The very air is pregnant with myths and legends. This is the country where Merlin was born. Parts of the Welsh landscape have remained the same for centuries. The deep valleys of rural Wales have given a birth to some of the world's greatest myths, where food and legend have more than a modest connection to the land. Wales is not a vastly populated land, and therefore its literature is somewhat condensed. Its small size only serves to concentrate the intensity of its flavour. Although smaller than its neighbours, the literary voice of Wales is still distinct and echoes the spirit of its culture. Dylan Thomas, Sian Thomas Owen, Eiffel Thomas are the poets who can proudly represent the poetry of Wales. Dylan Thomas, I could never have dreamt that there were such goings on in the world between the covers of books, such sandstorms and ice blasts of words, such staggering peace, such enormous laughter, such and so many blinding bright lights, splashing all over the pages in a million bits and pieces, all of which were words, 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 and each of which were alive forever, in its own delight and glory and oddity and light. Northern Ireland. Being situated on the island of Ireland, this part of the United Kingdom has always been struggling for its independence from Great Britain. Cultural links between Northern Ireland, the rest of Ireland and the United Kingdom are complex. Unlike England, Scotland and Wales, Northern Ireland has no history of being an independent country or of being a nation in its own right. Northern Ireland shares both the culture of Ireland and the culture of the United Kingdom. The city of Belfast has long been renowned as a cultural and literary capital of the United Kingdom. Belfast has over the years been home to a vast array of great writers and poets like Louis MacNeese, Thomas Moore, Oscar Wilde, Jonathan Swift, James Joyce, George William Russell, and more contemporary poets like Seamus Heaney and Paul Malbom, all of whom have been recognized internationally for their literary achievements. After the Battle by Thomas Moore Night closed round, the conqueror's way, and lightning showed the distant hill, where those who lost the dreadful day stood few and faint, but fearless still. The soldier's hope, the patriot's zeal, forever dimmed, forever crossed. Oh, who shall say what heroes feel, when all but life and honor's lost? The last sad hour of freedom's dream, and valor's task moved slowly by, while mute they watched till morning's beam should rise, and give them light to die. There's yet a world where souls are free, but tyrants taint not nature's bliss, if death that world's bright opening be. Oh, who would live a slave in this? England, what are you? Royal, majestic, proud, foggy, mysterious, sometimes even strange and hostile, but inviting. Its cultural heritage is determined by its rich history, full of war for the throne, Roman and Norman conquests, and of course, its location. It has always been the center of culture, the most favorable place for all genres of art to thrive. The best pieces of architecture, painting, the most famous theaters, the richest museums can be seen here. The most famous musicians, actors, dancers, writers, sculptors inspired by this land and its culture created their masterpieces to glorify this land forever. Speaking about poetry, we can't but mention William Blake, Alexander Pope, Percy Bysshe Shelley, Lord Alfred Tennyson and of course William Shakespeare. So, presenting the best samples of English poetry, we'd like you to feel the tenderness of Blake's lines, understand deeply allegoric Tennyson's poetry, enjoy the depth 
in bits of Shakespeare's language, depicting overwhelming force of love, what triumphs over time and overcomes age and death. The Flower by Lord Alfred Tennyson Once in a golden hour I cast to earth a seed. Up there came a flower, the people said, a weed. To and fro they went, through my garden bower, and muttering discontent, cursed me and my flower. Then it grew so tall, it wore a crown of light, but thieves from over the wall stole the seed by night. Sought it far and wide, by every town and tower, till all the people cried, Splendid is the flower. Read my little fable, he the trans may read. Most can raise the flowers now, for all have got a seed. And some are pretty enough, and some are poor indeed. And now again the people call it butterweed. William Shakespeare my mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, where then her breasts are done. If hairs be wise, black wise grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well know that music has a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. A famous American poet, Carl Sandberg, once said, Poetry is an echo, asking a shadow to dance. So, we wish everyone find the lines which will make his soul dance and his heart thrill of delight. With best wishes. Pupils of school number 19.